Huh? Oh, I, I I don't know. It's that. Don't worry about it. Then we'll get we'll get it straightened out next week. Somebody's going to be here that can do that. Well, everybody needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everybody needs forgiveness, kindness of a Savior. Hope of nations. Singing Savior, can move mountain. God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. And Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. And fill my life again. I give my life to follow. Everything I believe in Now I surrender and Savior the Move mountain My God is mighty To save he is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave, and Jesus conquered the grave. Shine a light in, let the whole world see. Singing for the glory of a risen King. In Jesus, shine your light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior. And move a mountain. My God is mighty to save, and He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, and Jesus conquered the grave. Shine light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of a risen King. And Jesus, shine light in, let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of a risen King. For the glory of a risen King.
And why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? I'm clean today. And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? And Jesus is my portion and a constant friend is he and his eyes his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me I sing because he set me free for his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watched is me so why should we be discouraged and why should shadows come and why should our hearts be lonely And long for heaven and home when Jesus is our portion a constant friend is he and his eye his eyes on the sparrow and I know he watches me so sing because you're happy and be sing because you're free For his eye is on the sparrow And I know he watches you and me We should sing Because we're happy Let's sing because we're free Cause his eye is on the sparrow And I know he's watching you and me Thank you Jesus How's everybody doing? It's a good night to hang out with the Lord, ain't it? God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. Lived and died to buy my pardon. 
an empty grave is there to prove my Savior live because he lives I can face tomorrow and because he lives all fear is gone because I know no no he holds a future life is worth the living just because he lives how sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he brings but greater still Calm assurance This child can face The days because he lives Because he lives I'm face tomorrow And because he lives All fear is gone Because I know Oh Oh, he holds a future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight last final with pain, and their death gives way to victory I'll see the light of glory and I'll know he lives because he lives I could face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone cause I know Ho, oh, oh, ho, he holds a future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Tonight, John. Oh, Matthew twenty eight. Matthew twenty eight, if you're looking for a place to turn to. After the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified, he is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now, as I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, af afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and go to Galilee. There you will see me. When the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. And when the chief priests had met the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, 
You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while you were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this is a story that is widely circulated among the Jews even to this very day. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came to them and said, All authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything as I have commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Thanks, Webb. Check one, two. Oops. There, there's an old joke in, in, mu in, in the music business. That's why you buy SM58s, because they're bulletproof. Um, so if you're new, welcome. And um, put up that slide on the 11th step for a minute. There we go. That guy's pretty quick on the draw. I want to pray first, and then we'll look at that. So God, put me behind a cross that they not see, know, or hear me, but only see, know, and hear you, Lord. And Lord, we're, we're, we're seeking you, Lord, through prayer and meditation to get a better understanding of you. As the step says, for conscious contact to know you and, and feel your presence, God. And we thank you, Lord, that uh, in our lowest moment that you were there, you showed up. You know, when people who said they'd always have our back, where were they? But you showed up and you showed us a way and this walk in recovery, Lord, is just so amazing. No suffering. We're still going through things. But, Lord, if we would call on you as Lord and Savior, Jesus, that as we go through our life and through our trials and tribulations, we're not going through it alone anymore. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're, we're seeking through prayer and medication. No, meditation, not medication. To improve our conscious contact with God. There's a lot of people that are trying to, through the use of medication and other things, to get this conscious contact, but I, it never worked for me. I, <laughs> I got stoned and checked out. Anyways, but so what we're doing is we're praying for the knowledge of his will, and then we're asking him for the power to carry it out. Have you ever had a really tough time in recovery? I have. I can be honest. I can hold up my toes, man. And you know what? Everything is available that we need. God's here. He testifies about that in his word. We see it in recovery material. But we need to be praying not only for the knowledge of his will, but our obedience with his power to carry out the things that he wants us to do. See, it's not God that limits me. It's John who limits John. See, he has the power. It's when I'm like Peter. And I have, I'm like thinking I'm like the best, the toughest guy in the world. And then I have a human moment where my humanity gets revealed. Peter was this bold fisherman. If you've ever read this book, this is called the Bible. It's a great read. Peter was a bold fisherman. He suffered, Peter and I had a lot of things in common because he suffered from foot and mouth disease like I do. Anybody ever had that? You know, we can, we can talk a game and that, but when it comes down to it, there's sometimes fear can trap us. Fear can change us in a direction that God wants to take us to. But the reality is in 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, for the spirit God gives us is not fear but power Love in a sound mind. You know, when we talk about this story in Matthew 28, there's a lot of relationship going on here. Isn't it amazing how Jesus had all these disciples over three years, they were together with him? And when he's getting crucified, John's the only one that's present. Turn to Luke chapter 14, verse 50, Sean, please. It, it says this point because, see, Mark chapter 14, verse 
50. No, I, oh, I'm sorry. No, Mark 14, 50. 50, 50, 50. Verse 50. Case in point, Jesus is getting grabbed. All the guys that were with him. Look what it says. He was teaching and then it says, then everyone deserted him and fled. See, active addiction, that was part of my story. Things happened and everybody would say, I've got your back. And what did they do? <laughs> they deserted and they fled. But there's such a message here because back in the time of Christ, women were looked at with equality, I'm saying, in, in the nation of Israel with the Jews. A daughter was property of her father and then became property of, their hus of her husband. Then Jesus comes along and he's crucified and why he's there except for John, the women are there. Thank you, ladies. The Apostle Paul got it too. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. It says, Neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female, for we are all one in Christ. See, the world is going to tell you, I don't care who you are, you're going to run into someone somewhere. And that's why we need the freedom and the truth and the word of God, because people like to put people down. How many times did we get into a situation where somebody said, said something to us that rubbed us wrong and we drank or drugged over it? I don't have enough hands and feet and fingers and toes to hold up. That's my story. But I love what happened. So let's go back to Matthew chapter 28 for a moment here. So after the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, and we're going to talk, because today we celebrate Easter. We, I call it Resurrection Sunday. And I want to talk about the one who I seek in prayer and meditation to try and prove, to, to get a, a more clear conscience of who he is. So I can have that relationship, so that trust is built, so that when things come up, when thoughts about, oh, quit, give up, go back. But see, if I'm relational with him and I'm trusting him with the outcome, great things happen like all you guys. God put, puts you guys in my life. I've got trusted friends that I can call up and speak to because I don't trust my thinking sometimes. But after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Why did they? Because from the time that he was crucified and they had placed his body in the tomb, the tomb of a rich man was one thing that was prophesied that the Messiah would be laid in that tomb. The Sabbath occurred and, and I was thinking about that, that whole piece, and they stopped. They, they were going back to finish the preparation. But then it was like the Lord said to me, but John, just think what happened. Jesus had just been crucified Imagine the impact that this had on everybody there. Or even greater for those that first arrived there. Can you imagine the impact they had when they were expecting to see a dead body in that tomb? And guess what? If you haven't heard the word, the tomb was empty. And we'll see that in a moment. They're going along. Who? The bold fishermen, the four? You know? James and John, Andrew and Peter? No. The women are going. The women are going. And there was a violent earthquake. God has a way in our lives, doesn't he? He's shaking us up a little bit. When, 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 when there's a violent earthquake or there's a shaking, you know, and, and I like to say there was a time in my life where God kind of lifted me up and shook some sense into me. But, but what he's doing is there's, there's a reason because there's an angel that's going to come into the picture right now. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and he sat on it. 
And then it describes of the appearance of this angel. It was like lightning, his clothes were white as snow, and the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The guards were Roman centurions. They were, these were really tough guys. But you know what? They were an enemy of the Jews. They held them in oppression, kind of like addiction does to, it, to us, doesn't it? But see, what happens is there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power when we're walking with him because as these Roman centurions had no power, they passed out. They were like dead men. If we're walking with him and we're trusting him, and I'm not saying that we're going to go around and God's going to do all this stuff for us to turn around and say, hey, look what I did. Absolutely not. But see, there's power in his name. We need to understand that. You know, that's why in the 11th step, you know, we're praying for the knowledge of his will. See, when we understand his will and we understand his power, we understand him and we understand what he can do in our life. We start to change because we, now we're having an active relationship with him, and the next time that the devil tries to throw a snare at you, you can say, not today, Satan. Get behind me by the blood of Jesus. It has a way of putting all those things, that sin, that addiction, to sleep because we're not going that way. We're not looking that way anymore because we're walking in a new freedom. And I want to tell you something else, that no matter who you are and what you've done, you are not too bad for God. And if you want to debate that, I'll debate that with you after the service. Because i got a couple stories about how bad I used to be, and I'm not the toughest guy out there. You know, and that's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to keep looking in our past at the time we got mad or we might have cussed God or something like that, and he loves to point fingers at us. But see, as we're starting to grow in the knowledge of who Christ is and we're having an active relationship with him, we start to gain one more thing, and that's that we're able to hear the voice of the Lord. And when you hear the voice of the Lord, you also recognize what is the voice of the enemy. And you say, not today, Satan. So, so the angel shows up in verse 5 and says, said to the women, do not be afraid. That's a constant theme that we see when, when the Lord shows up or an angel shows up. Because sometimes that can be terrified, and the thing about it is, you need to know this, that a relationship with God shouldn't terrify you. Some of the stuff out there terrifies me. It scares me what's going on today. You know? We need to be praying for the kids in the community. You know, a 17-year-old kid got murdered about a month ago. You know, he flashed an empty gun. The other guy had a, had a loaded gun. That's sad, 17 years old. But that's what the enemy wants to do. We need to be going out and telling people there's a freedom. And you know what? It doesn't cost you a dime because Jesus paid the price for it. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Like the old song, I'm yours. That's what he's telling us. He wants to have a relationship. He said, they, the angel says, don't be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. And I was, I was down at the whale's tail this morning, and I, and I was reading this passage. I did a little sm small devotional, and, and it was crazy because somebody took a picture that was there, someone I know, and I didn't even realize it. And the sun had been coming up, and there were like rays of sunshine like shining right through my body. And I'll show you that picture after service. It blew my mind. God is with us. When God stops being with me is when I turn around and I move away from him. And that's easy to do. But it says here, For I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. But my question to everyone here is, are you looking for Jesus? You know? I don't take my relationship with Christ granted. I seek him every day. I want more. You know? It's like the new drug, Jesus. I want to OD on that. 
because it's good. The word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. So the, the angel's talking, and then he tells them, he's not here, he has risen. Can you imagine that? You're going there, you see all that's going on, because it's easy to look at it and go, no big deal. Really, an earthquake, an angel? The, the huge stone is just moved by this angel? He tells them he is risen. Come and see the place where he lay. Watch this. And then he says this. The angel says this. And this is so profound because Jesus backs it up in a few more verses. He says, then go quickly and tell his disciples. See, I get so much hope in, in this verse and in verse 10. Because cause maybe, maybe you grew up and, and you really had a good life and, you know, there was nothing in your life where you thought that God, you know, that there was no chance you, you, you were in with God. You know, there was no chance of being rejected. But sometimes in our life we go through things and we're just wondering, you know, not anymore, but there was a time I was like, wow, could God love me? I mean, I, I got saved when I was a teenage kid, and I'd like to say my life was good, and I never used another drug after that, but I'd be a liar if I said that. But then I read verse, what is it, verse 7 and verse 10? And he's telling them to go and tell the same people that, put up Mark chapter 14, verse 50 again, that deserted him and fled. See, maybe you've deserted him and fled, and today's the day for you to come home, because he's risen. We don't serve a dead God. We don't serve a God with a little g, we serve a God with a very large G in front of his name. People are going around and we, we think that, you know, I've had people tell me I'll invite them to recovery church and, and then I, I'll see the look on their face and I'll say, don't worry, I've never been hit by lightning in here. But sometimes we have that guilt, you know, where we're pushed away. So he tells them, there you will see him. And he says, now I've told you. So the women hurried. The women are so active in everything that's going on here. You know what they're doing? They're exercising something that we need to exercise in our recovery. That's called obedience. See, when I'm disobedient, I'm doing whatever I'm, I want to do. Man, it's like my life starts spiraling out of control. It's not good. Not only did they do what they were told, but they hurried for, away from the tomb Afraid yet filled with joy. Seeing all that, probably freaking out, but just being a joy joyful that, you know, when I see the word joy connected to this, that they knew that he had risen. And you know what? In a couple verses, he's revealing himself to them. Let's read there. And suddenly, oh, the next verse. And suddenly Jesus met them. And he says, greetings. But that's how he engages with us. You know, we hear it so many times. Oh, I don't want anything to do with your religion because that's a punishing God. No, he's a just God, but he's merciful. He's full of grace. And maybe you're saying, yeah, no, he's punishing. If, if he's punishing, then why would he ask for his disciples? Why would he ask for the people that fled from him and deserted him if he isn't a God of grace and a God of mercy? and a God that loves us. He loves you. Greetings, they, he said. They came to him, clasped his, hand, his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus himself said this, said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And maybe he's calling you tonight, because he wants to see you and wants to have a relationship with you. Because he's not in the tomb. He's risen. And so we have a relationship. And then over the next five verses, it talks about the guards being paid money to lie. 
And who was it from? From Was it from the people? No, it was from the religious leaders. See, a religion has a really strange way of kind of like, you feel like you're shackled and, you know, you're enslaved. And if you don't do this, you're not a good Christian. Or if you, if you don't wear this clothing, your relationship's off with God. Or I've heard it, people say that, it, you know, somebody might be, might be sick and they, they're saying, oh, it's their faith, man. It's their, no, it's not. That's what I love about the Word of God because you know what? There was this guy named Paul from Tarsus or Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul. He had an affliction. He prayed to God for it to be taken away, and he found out one thing. Christ's grace was sufficient. We're going to go through things, and like I said before, God's with us. But there's more good news, and I want to finish up the rest of this chapter real quick. See, if you're willing to enter into a relationship with Jesus and you may not have too much time on your hands, God will put you to work. You know? I remember when I was dabbling my toes in Christianity, you know, we'd go to church, ride in on the Harley and stuff like that, want to act different than everybody else. And I kind of looked at all these really awesome people and I was like, Man, it looks like Mayberry RFD3 here, you know? Just like this boring life. But because, you know what, my life was so out of control still, I didn't know how to have peace in my heart. And I thought that if I got more involved in my relationship with the Lord, I was going to become like this boring guy. I got to tell you something. I don't have enough hours in a day anymore. God will fill up the time for you. But the best thing about it, you know what it is? That he wants to have a relationship with you. And then what happens, let's drop to uh, verse 16. (laughs) So, then it says 11 disciples. 11, yeah, Judas had killed himself. So there's 11 disciples. Went to Galilee. There, once again, we see the exercising of Obedience, very important in our recovery. I need to do what God wants me to do. I need to do what people that have been in recovery for a long time and listen to them. I need to be proactive in my recovery and in my walk with Christ. And it's amazing how God pulls everything together. So the 11 go to Galilee. They did exactly what they were asked to. And you know what? Something amazing is going to happen. These guys that, in verse (laughs) 50, that, that deserted and fled, Jesus isn't worried about what they did in the past. He wants to give them something in the future, and he wants to do that for everyone here tonight. He's not concerned with your past. He knows about your past, and he hasn't rejected you. He wants to give you a future. So you got these guys that, that deserted him. You know, John was there, but the rest, they fled. Peter denied him three times. The rooster crowed. Jesus told him, Peter, you're going to do that. I couldn't imagine. In one of the Gospels, Jesus looked at him, and Peter just lost it. But it's so amazing, and when, if we, I don't, don't, you don't have to go there, but you go into the book of Acts, and all of a sudden the guy that denies Christ says one of, not the, because the Sermon on the Mount, I, as far as I'm concerned, is the greatest sermon ever written. But Peter's wasn't too bad at all. And at the end of it, 3,000 people came to Christ that day. He had the power of the Holy Spirit. See, that's what happens when you ask Jesus into your heart. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. And your life starts to change. And, and as I was saying, the 11 are there. The guys that fled. The deserters. The, the turncoat. Peter turned coat on them. So, you know. And watch what he says. Because, see, humanity would say, 
Forget them guys. Get rid of them. They have no value. But we're not talking about humanity. We're talking about a relationship with Almighty, Holy God. Triune in nature, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're talking about being a new creation where the old is gone and the new has come. We're talking about living a life that you will never regret. It's pretty good when you don't feel like you're all alone. And so the eleven went to Galilee to the mountain. Watch this, where Jesus had told them to go. Obedience. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And sometimes we go through doubts. But I don't see him kicking anybody to the curb here. Then Jesus came to them and said, watch this. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Then he says the magic word, therefore, in the next verse. What's it there for? It's therefore to tell you that Jesus is making, is about to give them a great commission with the authority from heaven. All authority has been given to him. The right for him to ask them to do this. But watch what he says. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. I believe we do that when we 12-step people. Anybody agree with that? I believe we do. God uses that. He'll honor that. You know, I heard a long time ago, you, can, you, you know, we can't do a whole lot with someone until we're willing to go help them get rid of the cobwebs in their head. You know? So he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Triune, yes. And watch this. How do you disciple them? It tells us right here, verse 20, in teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Who? Everything Jesus commanded them to do. Like love God and love your brother. Who's your brother? Look around the room to the right and the left and both sides back, and guess what? There's your brothers and sisters. You know, I, I, I've used this analogy before. I love the cross because what happens is we give our life to Christ and we get this vertical relationship, and when we get that vertical relationship, we're able to do a horizontal relationship with everybody else Cause it's, because it's a living God that's living in us, counseling us, changing us. Sometimes we have a bad day and we're like, I don't want to talk to that person and the Holy Spirit will go, really? Do you know where you were when I, I changed your life? Okay, Lord. So he tells them, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. So he tells us, go out, get people, tell them about the Lord. Tell people about recovery. Do the work. You know, 12-step work. I know we're on the 11th step, but I'm going to jump ahead. I can. I'm the pastor. No, I'm kidding. But, no, but, you know, is it, is, you know, if we really look at this, this is so simplistic. You know, it's so simple, even a biker like me can get it. So don't worry. I, I was able to get it. I can, because you know what? Because somebody did this for me. You know? Ever heard the old saying in, in AA, become a minor bird, just repeat what others have done? We just do that. Oh, I don't know how to disciple somebody. Really? Good. Get a red-lettered Bible and read everything in the red letters and see what Jesus did for other people. How he loved people. And they came up against him. And what are you doing eating with sinner, sinners and ca tax collectors? And he said, well, a well man doesn't need a physician. Hello? And then we start to do what he tells us to do in this commission. And we become his arms and his legs and his mouth. And we, and we, and we, and we share the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ with people. And maybe if we made an effort and went out there and touched the lives of people, maybe all of a sudden things would start to change a little bit. Everybody's pointing in so many different directions, but I think what we need to do is we need to point this way and ask God to give us the power to go out and to help people. 
He says, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, he says this, I am with you always to the very end of the age. In, o- in other words, he's never going to leave you nor forsake. Hey, Henry, can you help me out? You got, you got, would you come up and pray with somebody if somebody wants some prayer while I do the last song? I'm going to do the last song. And Henry's up here. If you'd like to get some prayer, if that's okay, I don't want to put anybody out here. I'm going to do a song. I want to thank the Lord for, for his word. So I want to pray. So God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that power has been given to you, Lord, all power. But you're God. But you show us even in a line of obedience, Lord God. You listen to your Father, Lord. And we should listen to you, Lord. And, and to go out there and to touch people's lives, Lord. Because in the 11th step, God, we're seeking through prayer and meditation for conscious contact with you, God, for power, for your will, Lord. So show us, Lord, and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, and Lord, we thank you for the food in the hands. After the service, we'll have uh, some food out there for everyone. God bless you. That's all right. Oh, Lord, my God, when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, power throughout, universe displayed, and sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art And sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art And when I think That God his Son not sparing he sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. That on that cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. And I shall bow 
in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art and sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art and sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art how great thou art how great thou art so Lord thank you for this night for everybody that's here I just pray that body it will be nourished with the food that you've provided that our that our uh, our minds would be renewed, God, and our hearts would be filled up with your love. In 